Hello everyone, welcome back to the Smite Comprehensive Guide to Lancelot. This was a request. I apologize, I don't remember the name of the requester. Uh, the comment has been lost to the depths of my comment history. I cannot relocate that comment for whatever reason, so if you are the original requester, just drop a comment down below. I'll update the description. But this was a request. Uh, we're finally getting onto this because my internet has returned to being consistent again. So... Lancelot is really interesting as an assassin because he's also a really unique support, which I'll talk about after the jungling, but let's start with the jungling. All right. Now, what's also particularly interesting about Lancelot is both Boomba's Dagger and Eye of the Jungle work really well on him, but for totally different reasons. I personally prefer Boomba's Dagger because it's a bit more damaging in the long term. I'll talk about that. So we'll, we'll start with Boomba's Dagger first, and then I'm going to go back and talk about the differences with Eye of the Jungle. But I prefer Boomba's Dagger. It is going to help you hit a little bit harder later on, ability-wise, because you do get the cooldown and the penetration from Boomba's Spear. You are getting a lot of power out of this, as opposed to the Protector of the Jungle, which gives you the same power, but it doesn't give you that penetration. It doesn't give you the cooldown. Uh, Seer of the Jungle is nice and all, but... Not really something that I use on Lancelot. Well, again, we'll talk about that later, but back to the point. For the second item, a lot of people really like to go with Jotun's Wrath, which is good on him, do not misunderstand me, but there is a really serious problem with Jotun's Wrath on Lancelot. Well, there's a pro and a con here. The obvious pro is the 20% cooldown reduction, right? This is going to mean that when you use your abilities on your horse, your your mounted abilities, you're going to get your ability to jump onto your horse a little bit earlier. But at the same time, jumping on your horse costs you, depending on the rank of... Um, what is this actually officially called? Hold on. Mount up. I thought it was just mounted. But... Every time you use Mount Up, it's going to cost you 30 to 50 mana each time you use it, depending on its rank. Early on in the game, busting out 30 mana just to jump on your horse is a bit expensive. When you are level 3, usually when you're jungling, you usually want to get your second, then your first ability first. Mount Up is your third ability, but anyways. 30 mana, level 3 onwards, to about, until you can get some really good mana increases, is very expensive. Alright? Especially since Boomba's Dagger here only gives you 25 mana per jungle minion killed, alright? So, Jotun's Wrath, while it does regenerate your ability to mount up onto your horse faster, which means you can get back onto your horse to go frolicking around somewhere else, on the other hand, that also means that you're running through your mana a little bit faster. Now, just to be very clear here, if you're not fighting something, be it a jungle camp, an enemy god, whatever, if you're not fighting, you should be on your horse. This is a 20% move speed boost, which gives Lancelot a huge mobility advantage over nearly every other potential jungler in the game. The only real exceptions here are specifically a wheelish and a jungling Janus. Alright, those are the only two that can actively compete with this level of move increase. And in the late game, they can't even compete with the quest stacks, because the quest stacks are insane. Alright, but we'll talk about those towards the end there, because they don't really matter too much in the early game, because you're not going to have that many of them. Back to the point, Mount Up is hugely important for a jungling Lancelot. This is absolutely fantastic. But again, it's very mana-intensive. And again, while Jotun's Wrath is going to help you get that back-off cooldown a little faster, it's going to hurt your mana regeneration, because obviously you're able to get back on your horse a little bit faster. Now, keeping in mind Jotun's Wrath is good, I do prefer Hydra's Lament. You still get 10% cooldowns, which is good. It's an acceptable substitute we get some penetration right off the top which isn't so important in the early game but that helps us shift into the mid game better but most importantly we get 
2.5 MP5 per 10% of our missing mana. Furthermore, we don't really lose that much in the way of power because Jotun's Wrath has 35 power, Hydra's Lament has 30, so we're only losing 5 power, so it's not like we're hitting substantially less hard, but we are getting that extra mana income. We're losing a little bit of cooldown, but we get penetration in, in, in exchange, and we have the passive where our next basic basic attack deals extra 30% damage, which is actually really nice, because you're, when you're mounted on your horse, and you use the second ability, that roots the person, so you're almost guaranteed to get that Hydra's Lament proc after dismounting, and you can also, of course, get a proc, you can, let's actually give a demonstration here, We'll use Neath as usual because she doesn't blind anyone or stun you out or anything like that. We can get a really great proc there, right? And then we can blast you with here and stab. It's just very... You'd be surprised how consistently you can get that proc, that Hydra's Lament proc off with Lancelot. So Hydra's Lament is actually a really nice damage spike for him. Alright, really the only thing you're losing, functionally, is... 10% cooldowns, but in exchange you're getting better mana regeneration, you're getting 50 more mana, you're getting penetration, you're losing 5 power, right? I personally prefer Hydra's Lament for these reasons. I will then usually follow up with Soul Eater. Now, a lot of people build Soul Eater on a lot of ability-based assassins. Again, Soul Eater is one of the very few stacking items that I think assassins can consistently get away with, even requiring 100 stacks. It's still really manageable getting this but it's particularly interesting on lancelot because when he's mounted he gets this really delightful health shield that starts out pretty small but can grow quite large so in the middle of a fight let's say let's actually go back to neath here right let's say we're going to initiate on this half dead neath we're ganking her Right, alright, so she does that, alright, so she's got some damage here, we slap around a little bit here, and then, alright, so then we've killed her, and here comes, I thought these were gone, but alright, so let's go on ahead and do another attack here, because what I want you to see is your ability to really get away, well, it doesn't help it. And then we just make our getaway here. We dodge. You can see she hit. She landed the shot. Um, but even without protections, we got out fairly safely. Which means you can actually, with Soul Eater, do miniature hit and run attacks fairly effectively. Or even more importantly, is and what's even more significant is if you're going to gank someone as Lancelot, right? You're gonna build up this health shield while running over there. Get this attack in, get the Hydra's Lament, and then you're going to leave, go hit another lane potentially, and even if they see you coming in lane, like, let's say Neath sees me coming, you can see, obviously this is level 5, earlier on in the game you have less health on this, but I can take a decent amount of shots here, obviously she has no items, but I can take a decent amount of shots and not really have a huge problem, unless you're running face first into some pretty mad crowd control or something really intensely damaging, like something out of Anubis' face. You're not really going to lose a whole lot of HP running into a lane, unless, again, it's late game and there's multiple people there, or they're unusually high single target damage. Again, Anubis is a great example of this. Late game hunters, especially if they're building crit, but early to mid game, not really a big deal. You can preserve your health while taking a couple of blows, maybe shots from minions, maybe the occasional ability from whoever you're trying to gank. Slap down and heal up some HP before even getting into the fight, right? Your initial moves, having gotten into the fight with the benefit of the horse shield, you run in there, lose the shield or take some damage on the shield, slap in, you know, your abilities off the horse, one of the two and heal some HP back up if you weren't at full, and then just keep on rolling, all right? It combos in a really unusual way, and a lot of people don't think about this. When people talk about Lancelot, not a whole lot of them talk about the, the horse shield. It's really actually, even for a jungle Lancelot who is really focused on the damage, it can really make an interesting difference combined with Soul Eater, okay? It's really, really interesting, because again, it is going to help soften any initial impact that 
you might receive. And this is, of course, assuming you're seen in the first place. All right, if you're slipping in behind them, they're not going to see you. So all you're really needing to worry about is taking shots from minions while you're slipping in behind them, and the shield is easily going to handle that. Even at level 1, it's going to handle a majority of minion damage coming at you All right, when you're getting into a lane. That's not really a problem. Then you blast out your... Ideally, your root, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. It can be the horse dash, too. Slap down your ability and heal up anything you were missing beforehand and keep on rolling, right? So Soul Eater is really, really rewarding on Lancelot in ways that it isn't rewarding on other junglers. Don't get me wrong, it's still great on other junglers, but it's particularly interesting on Lancelot, especially since if you're trying to get out of a situation, the horse shield can help you preserve some of that health. So you're going to come in and out of ganks as a jungling Lancelot overall in better health conditions than his competition does. Okay? So... Let's talk a bit more about the fourth item. Now, so far, you'll also notice we've been really stacking up a lot of this cooldown. We actually have 20% here, and we know we're going to be getting another 10% off Boombas. So, what I typically like to do at this particular point in time is... I generally really like to go for the Crusher. All right? We've got 20% uh, cooldowns at this particular point in time, so we're in pretty good shape for cooldowns. But why the Crusher? Well, fun fact. Your boy has an AoE on his third hit. Alright, let's grab... Uh, to hell with it. Let's grab the speed just because we're jungling. Right? You have an AoE auto attack. I mean, I don't recommend going full auto Lancelot, because that does not combo well with his horse. The Hydro Cement combos well because it's a single auto attack after the fact, but full auto Lancelot, trust me, I've tried. Full auto Lancelot, oh, you're really going in deep, huh? All right. Full auto Lancelot is a tough sell, all right? But an increase in attack speed while also buffing your ability damage isn't really that bad, especially if you're trying to clear a camp, right? Again, keep in mind that even in the mid game, Boomba's Dagger is still really nice for health regeneration, it's 10% of the monster's health, and as the match goes on, the monsters get more health, alright? So you're healing. You can heal a lot. This is another reason, by the way, why I really like Boomba's Spear. You are healing, potentially, a ton, ton of this, right? 8% of their health, 10% of your mana. This is 10% of your health. You lose a little bit of the healing, but you get percentage mana healing. But this is really great for healing yourself, even after a really rough fight. Even if a gank went badly, and you, but you still won, you still were able to get out. Well, I say won, but you might get out because you're losing. But even if you still escape a bad gank alive with no mana, you can still use your auto attacks, especially with a crusher at that point, to go right on ahead and heal back up relatively efficiently because you do have that AoE auto, which is going to take care of the smalls with very little trouble. I mean, you can actually see here... Keeping in mind, I only have baseline Boomba's Dagger, and I've only got three other items besides. This is theoretically a max level speed camp. I'm blasting through this decently well, right? It turns out really nicely, okay? And if I, of course, had more items, I would be even faster. So, the Crusher is actually really nice on Lancelot for that reason. Besides, of course, it also increases the amount of damage your abilities are doing, and it gives you some more penetrations. So now we're at 20% pen, we're at 20% cooldowns. Really great, right? And we already know, again, we're going to get to 30% cooldowns and pen once we evolve that Boomba's Dagger. Great. At this particular point, this is really where the flex items start to happen. Okay, these last two items are where the flex picks are. Right, if you need anti-healing, this is where you're going to pick up Brawler's Speed Stick, right, as usually your 5th or 6th. If, if the enemy team is really tanky, this is where you're going to pick up Heart Seeker. Sometimes I'll pick up Heart Seeker anyways because I really want that 10% pen. Sometimes, right? Then again, sometimes you want maybe Shadow Drinker. I've seen people like this, right, killing an enemy god drains their shadow, causing you to enter stealth, gain 30% movement speed, right? Unfortunately, and this is the only real downside, and this is why I don't use this, firing an ability. Unless you happen to already be on your horse at the time, 
which is really difficult to kill an enemy god that way. A minion would have to finish them off for you, incidentally. You're not getting that move, that move speed benefit on your horse, right? So I don't really like this, but it's it's there, <laughs> kind of, right? I personally am really fond of Rune Forged Hammer. Now this might sound a little weird to you until you remember you have a absurd amount of hard CC on Lancelot. And again, this is something not a lot of people really think about. But Rune Forged Hammer is an amazing pickup for him. All right, because Lo and behold, we come in here, and we root her. Look at that. There's our Runeforged Hammer proc. Lovely. Right? We love to see it. We're going to just auto-attack her a little bit here, because I want to save up my second ability here. Boom! Oh, look, another rune! And don't even get me started. I'm not going to use the ult because it's going to take forever for to... Well, I suppose we can. Why the hell not, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look! It didn't proc it. Theoretically, you should have because this is supposed to cripple. Crippling targets in the area. That's right, they changed cripple. Cripple isn't hard CC anymore. Not a huge deal because you still have two other hard CCs. I keep forgetting they... I keep forgetting they made Cripple soft CC somehow. But anyways, back to the point. You still have two really great options for proccing Runeforged, particularly, and this is usually how I proc this, I usually proc it with this ability right here. Boom. It, I timed it wrong, but that's fine. You saw it earlier, so it's whatever. Right? But that's usually how I like to proc it, and it's really, really great there. Right? I'll actually sometimes even grab the rune breaking because this is absolutely fantastic at mitigating damage coming in. Or, if a battle lasts long enough, you can 100% use that shockwave to reduce the damage enemies are doing while you're trying to get away on your horse, making your shield last a little longer. So I'm a huge fan of rune forged on Lancelot. It's not a required thing on him, by no means. Again, sometimes I need the combination of both Heartseeker and Brawler's Beatstick because the enemy team is both really tanky and healing a lot. Sometimes it happens. But generally speaking, if I don't need both of those at the same time, I'm going to run Runeforged. And even then, a lot of the times, I do really like Heartseeker. All right? It's, it's just something I am very fond of. Another really great option is, incidentally, Arondite. All right? Which is really, really nice, because Arondite, when your ultimate ability is finished casting, which means by the end of the jousting thing, while moving towards revealed enemies, that movement speed is while you're on your horse. Alright, you are going to book it. So Arondite is a very, very strong item on Lancelot just for this fact alone just the fact that he can absolutely move at breakneck speeds after ulting is just insane all right and then you they take additional damage if they're revealed by this effect all right hello this is absolutely amazing and if i don't need if i don't need the penetration from heartseeker if i don't need the percentage health damage because they're tanky and i don't need the anti-heal of brawler's beat stick you can bet your bottom dollar I'm running Arendite. It's just incredible. And then we go on ahead and bring up Boomba Spear. We've got 40% cooldowns here. If you don't like going to 40% cooldowns because you're fond of the damage potion giving you those cooldowns, obviously you would go for Heartseeker. Perfectly viable option, but Arondite is just absolutely amazing. Uh, gives you actually slightly more power than Heartseeker as well. Heartseeker is, again, Heartseeker is the response to tanky comps. But this is an absolutely incredible build. You have lots of cooldown. You've got penetration. You've got 30% penetration, which is really good for not even focusing in on tankier targets and just absolutely fantastic. It is worth talking really quickly about Boomba's Hammer here. Again, we get that cooldown reduction. Again, I'm just not the biggest fan of 70 true damage. It's just not that great compared to the fact that we have Hydra's Lament. It's just a weaker Hydra's Lament effect. This can be really useful if the enemy team is really tangy, but even then, Boomba Spear gives us 10% penetration and Boomba's Hammer does not, so 
really the, the point is fairly moot here. Your active cooldowns are reduced by 0.5 seconds, but honestly, 0.5 seconds is not that big of a deal. Right, yes, this can pro uh, stack up, obviously, to 1.5 if you use all three of your regular abilities, and you are healed for 80 health, but it's... <sighs> His cooldowns aren't so long that this is really useful, alright? And this is even only your active cooldowns. I believe they're only talking about this. Let's actually do a test on this. I don't use Boomba's Hammer. <laughs> oh, wait, I need to actually have Boomba's Hammer before. <laughs> wait a minute. I need Boomba's Hammer to actually do this. There we go. And I don't use Boomba's Hammer because I just fa I find it too weak. Okay, it's your actual abilities. It's not your actives. Does it also affect your actives, though? It does not. It is your abilities. So they actually have the wrong term there because actives technically means your relics and your glyphs. So that's a bit of a typo there, but... Anyways, losing a half second off of your abilities after using your abilities by landing an auto attack, it can be nice, but a lot of the times, again, I just find it too weak. Compared to Hydra's Men, it's just not as good. I prefer Boomba Spear. I like the ability to escape into the jungle. Something Lancelot's really good at, by the way, is escaping into the jungle and healing off of jungle camps. Lancelot can consistently pull this off. In a lot of situations, other junglers would not survive, right? So if a uh, fight is going south, it is easier with Lancelot. I'm not saying it's guaranteed, obviously, but it's easier with Lancelot to hop on your horse and get the hell out of there, slap a jungle camp, heal up, or jungle camp or two, heal up, and maybe rejoin the fight or maybe defend a tower if they won the fight in the meantime or what have you, right? You can go do something. So this is why I personally prefer Boomba Spear. This is generally why I like Boomba Spear on most junglers, anyways. I talked about this with Odin recently, but on Lancelot, it's particularly effective because it's even easier to get away from fights with Lancelot. I mean, Odin has his Raven Shout shield that he gets, which does make it a little bit more manageable for him to disengage if he wants to. But for Lancelot, not only does he get a shield that grows over the next couple of seconds, but he also gets a nice movement speed hike, right? Now, Eye of the Jungle is really interesting. As I've already mentioned, he does actually have good auto attacks. So, Eye of the Jungle isn't completely useless on him, it's actually pretty good. We also get 15 MP5, which, whether or not that's more or less useful than getting 20... Is it 20 or 25 mana? 25 mana off of jungle monsters from Boomer's Dagger, that's really going to depend, because basically you're getting an extra 3 mana regenerated per second of the jungle, or you rejuvenate for the average jungle camp, you're regenerating 75 mana. So it really comes down to, you know, how you want to roll this. But the protector of the jungle, if the enemy team has a decent number of physical protections, because we are in the jungle, you know, if you if you are escaping into the jungle, this actually makes the shield last a little longer, because you are getting that protection boost, you are getting 30 protections, you're getting 7% increased protections, and you do, of course, hit really hard in the jungle. I just don't find myself auto-attacking enough where I want to sacrifice the cooldown and penetration from Boomba's Spear for a 35% attack speed boost and the protection. But this can be very good in specific situations, and those specific situations are physical heavy team comps, enemy team comps. All right, It can be very nice there, but I, again, generally prefer Boomba's Spear, and this is generally how I approach Lancelot in the jungle. First, you know, four items, typically going to be Boomba's Dagger, Hydra's Lament, Soul Eater, or, and the Crusher. If you want to swap the Crusher and Soul Eater, you can. It's a bit riskier. I only recommend you do this if you're ahead. And the reason why that's better is because, again, as I already mentioned, Boomba's Dagger is going to regenerate you, on average, 75 mana for a camp. You've got the two sides and the one main. So that's three enemies, 25 mana each, 75 mana per camp. That is just under the cost of skilled strikes so functionally speaking for five mana you can slap down we can actually give an example of this right although we'll we'll bop this down to a boomba's dagger just for example purposes but you can functionally hit him once hit them with the ability and then go on ahead and clean the rest of them up in two auto attack chains one two three one two three 
and for five mana, you just cleared that relatively quickly, right? So you only really, again, in the long run, you paid only five mana to do that. So I do like the Crusher for that, but again, the only reason, the only way you'd be able to consistently pull this off is if you happen to already be ahead as a jungler. If you're behind, get the Soul Eater first, you're going to need the healing, and you're going to be scrounging a bit more for stacks, because if you're behind as Lancelot, that means the enemy jungler is moving damn quick, and they're probably all over you. This would be like a really high-skilled Thanatos, a decently skilled Awilish, an absolute mad lad of a jungle Janus. These are the kinds of junglers that are going to be able to outpace you or outfight you well enough as a Lancelot that you're probably going to have a hard time fighting them without a little bit of self-healing on that, right? Also, generally speaking, the reason why I recommend the Crusher as a fourth item is because you can start building those stacks on Soul Eater and get a little bit more power out of that. So when you do get the Crusher that's 30% of your power, this is going to hit a little harder, right? This is going to hit a little less hard. Actually, it's going to be decently less impactful if you build this third, because not only will you not have Soul Eaters yet, but you won't have Soul Eater evolved when you do build it. You have to build up those stacks. So, very uh, generally speaking, my advice is to build the Crusher fourth. But there are some situations, if you're ahead, that the Crusher is going to be the better choice. But you have to be at least a level ahead. All right. So just keep in mind, you can flip those two if you're ahead. Uh, again, love Rune Forged Hammer, love Iron Dite. If you, again, just for one final recap, if you have a tanky enemy comp, Heart Seeker is going to be better for you. If you ha need anti healing, Brawler's Beat Stick obviously is going to be better for you. Alright. But let's talk about the interesting phenomenon of Support Lancelot. Because this was really big when he first came out, and people kind of forgot about it. But with this early game meta makes Lancelot, at least for now, a little bit better in the support role than in the jungle role. Now, this might confuse you because I just sung the deep praises of Lancelot as a jungler and his relatively impressive advantage. And I'm not saying that early game Lancelot's jungling is bad. In fact, Lancelot remains pretty consistently useful throughout the match. However, the Camelot's quest stacks, or what I just, in short, call the quest stacks, are really, really interesting, because for each stack you get, you get a bit of an increase in movement speed, alright, which also benefits Mount Up, by the way, just so you know, and on top of that, you've got this really lovely, in total, 18% total movement speed, 60 stacks times 0.3%, or 0.003, um, you can get a decent movement speed boost through this. But in, in fact, if you get the full 60 stacks, you're almost doubling the mount up benefits. It's 18% with the passive, it's 20% on mount up, so it's pretty close. But this only really benefits Lancelot. In the late game, primarily. Yes, he gets a little bit of a benefit in the early to mid game, depending on how many... Uh, kills he gets, how many assists he gets. But as a jungler, he doesn't go through minions as quickly. Again, each camp, each jungle camp is three. In the early game, where you're helping out your mid laner in lane, you're going to get more of these, but as you, you know, ride around the jungle, your, your, your kill increase here is slower, right? Your income of your stack income is slower. Your build up is slower, I should say. So while this is at least well mounted, it is really useful for jungling Lancelot. And unmounted, you do take less basic attack damage from frontal attacks. Honestly, by the time this becomes really important, it's the late game, and because of the Stygian Beacon and the ability to push down the Titan down a lane and theoretically kill the enemy's Titan with your Titan, uh, which, if you have a good early game team comp, is very plausible, this is functionally not really that significant, right? Again, this is a really early game meta, especially now that they've removed the Spirit Surges, which 
makes the early game even more significant because there's less of a comeback mechanic. There's not a pro or a con to that, that's just how it is. But as a direct result of this, by the time you really want or need the increased movement speed for Lancelot, you don't have the stacks. And by the time you have the stacks, you're no longer as much in need of increased movement speed. All right, and as a jungling um, Lancelot, you're still you're only reducing basic attack damage by again 18% at full 60 stacks. And uh, that's not as I mean you're reducing a lot of attack damage because you're not building protections as a jungler in most situations unless you're splashing in the egg of the jungle, but. In most situations, it's not going to save your life, right? But, this changes with support Lancelot, because, fun fact, Lancelot receive, receives a stack for each god kill or assist, which is fascinating, because we have here a couple items that are great for building assist stacks. Sentinel's Gift, right? Or Protector's Mask. Both of these reward assists, and as a support, you are spending the bulk of your time in lane with someone else. Now, personally, I'm a bigger fan of Protector's Mask on him. I'll get to why in a, towards the end here, but I personally like Protector's Mask on Lancelot as a support Lancelot. But the point that I'm making here is that because he is support, and he is in lane more, and he is getting those... Minion, lane minion assists for a much longer period of time than Jungle Lancelot typically does, you are seeing his passive build up significantly faster than you would as a Jungle Lancelot. Okay. It's kind of rare to see a Lancelot full stack as a jungler, but as a support, it's a bit more reasonable. Be just because of this. Just because he spends more time physically in lane absorbing assists from the dying minions. Now, same thing applies with support Lancelot that it does with a lot of other mana intensive supports, which there aren't many, but he does have that really intensive mana usage, especially if he rotates between duo and mid, which he's one of the very few supports that I would encourage that, right? You can very easily pull that off with your mounted movement speed, especially as you're, again, building those stacks a little faster, so you're going to get more movement speed out of that than a equivalent jungling Lancelot at the same level would. So, starting with the Mystical Earring, and then going into, of course, Prophetic Cloak, great item on him, you're getting that cooldown reduction, you're getting both protections, you are surprisingly really capable of landing abilities on enemies with Lancelot. You can use your first ability on horseback to get your horse to charge forward. You, of course, have the double dash effect of the first ability there. You can pretty consistently grab these stacks with him, of course. And when that's fully stacked, we also get the auras here. Let me just grab these items stack here. Boing! Oh, there we go. I was going to say, do I have to go? They they kind of fixed that. But, you know, we can get some really nice percentage defense here on the full stacked version, which we're going to get to. Uh, again, as I've already covered, we actually have two formats of hard crowd control, as I proved with Runic Hammer earlier. Your second ability and the root on the horse, both proc Manticore spikes, which actually gives you some pretty consistent damage output through Manticore spikes. And again, of course, we have the lovely MP5. I don't usually finish this, though, right away. I just wanted to mention Manticore spikes are really good on him. Go back to the Mystical Earring for a second, because, again, when we're talking about crowd control abilities, this, again, also includes the slow, as well as the two hard crowd controls we talked about earlier. This also includes his ult. So Stone of Binding is also really, really strong on Lancelot as a support, and typically I'll grab this third before finishing Manticore's spikes, just because early on in the game that protection reduction is a little bit more impactful, all right? And then I'll usually finish Manticore's spikes. Additionally, we'll have a little bit more time to build up some really nice HP at this point. This is, obviously, if you watch the Fafnir episode, this is very similar to Fafnir with the exception of, obviously, the Protector's Mask, but this is really where we start to deviate, because whereas 
Fafnir was really interested in boosting the attack speed of his allies because the attack speed allies are going to benefit more from coerce than the ability-based ones. Of the Again, just to remind you, I did mention this in the Fafnir uh, Conquest match episode, but Fafnir's coerce does also give bonus damage to abilities, it's just that most abilities don't hit as often as auto-attacks do. But, whereas he's really concerned with attack speed, Lancelot isn't. Typically, for my fifth item on Lancelot, I'm going to be building a physical-specific item or a magic-specific item. I'm going to, again, assume standard enemy team comp, which is three physical, two magic. Usually, I'll grab Gladiator's Shield, because you are going to get a really great amount of damage out of this. 15 plus 25% of your protections from items and abilities as bonus physical damage absolutely lovely we get a little bit of cooldown here so we're running at 20 percent cooldown at this point we have 40 physical protection everyone knows how lovely this is this is a great again spike in damage for lancelot and then for my last item this is going to depend on whether or not i need anti-healing if i need anti-healing i'm going to sacrifice the cooldown and i'm going to run pestilence you could if you really wanted to drop glad shield for pridwin which is also a really strong item on Lancelot as well because it combos incredibly well with his uh, with his ult because fun fact again when your ultimate ability has finished casting you gain a shield this is just so you remember Grand Joust puts you on your horse maxes his health shield right off the top keeps you on your horse and does damage so you're after this is finished casting you're on your horse you have the max horse sh horse shield all right and then on top of that you're going to have the pridwin shield a lancelot with pridwin who has just finished casting his ult is really difficult to deal with <laughs> let's just be really clear here because not only does he have all the protections but he's also got health shield out the wazoo i mean yeah the enemy team can build erosion but i'm gonna be really brutally honest that's not gonna help them that much you're still toting around this massive health shield and with the fact that you're on your horse and the fact that this shield is gonna pop five seconds later it is nearly impossible as an enemy of a support lancelot to get away from this there are very few people that can manage this, and only if they see it coming. Alright? Because he is going to be making tracks. Again, keep in mind that a support Lancelot has a much easier time building his quest stacks than a jungle Lancelot does. He is going to be all over you, and this shield's going to prop, uh, prop, pop. And whether you go with Glorious Pridwin for the increased... I think that's the... Uh, increased shield yeah or the no this is the increased shield reverend print one is the one with the really big shield that makes him nearly diff, nearly impossible to kill or the more damaging shield glorious print one, which pops twice okay whichever one you want to roll with totally up to you but pridwin on lancelot is disgusting i want you to be very very understanding of this all right it's stinking gross all right but typically i'll grab gladiator's shield and then if i need magic protections i'll roll right into genji's guard this is something i'm also very fond of doing another alternative you can do is run pridwin with the shield of your choice or the the glyph of your choice and then you can from here go into if you need anti-healing and they have physical protections you can run contagion if you need anti-healing and you need magic protections you can obviously still go pestilence you can build the anti-heal item you need from here that's not really a huge problem that's also something i'm really fond of doing or you can just grab gladiator's shield but i don't really necessarily do both pridwin and glad shield not very often Right, you have all of these really fantastic options. You can also, by the way, another great item on him is the Bewitched Relic Dagger. Especially running, as a support, the Heavenly Wings with the Entangling Wings. You get a great root effect. 
you increase your allies' move speed, you're increasing your own move speed, which if you get on your horse right afterwards is really difficult to deal with, and it's running in Tangling Wings makes managing the pace of a fight a lot easier. All right, because if the if the enemy team is trying to flee, boom, entangling win wings, no one's leaving. Oh, your team is trying to disengage, they're having a hard time, they need to get out, boom, entangling wings, the enemy team isn't pursuing while your guys are running like hell, even faster than normal. Entangling wings is great on support, Lancelot. I don't usually get it as my first relic, though. Keep that in mind. My first relic is going to be something a little bit more crippling to the enemy team. I'm really fond of either Horrific Emblem or Belt of Frenzy. It really depends on who my ADC is and who my mid lane is. But Entangling Wings is almost always my second relic on support Lancelot. Alright, want to be really clear here. But Bewitched Dagger, boom. Not only are you going to have the decreased basic attack damage reduction from frontal attacks, but you're also reducing their attack speed. Good luck to any hunter trying to kill you. In fact, Lancelot is one of the extremely few, and this is why he's interesting as a support, Lancelot is one of the extremely few supports in the game that doesn't care that much about hunters. Usually, hunters shred through the support because they build Ferocious Executioner, you're taking that bonus damage, they're reducing your physical protections, You just they just shred through most supports. Lancelot is not one of these. Not only does he have the protections to help out in the first place, which most supports do, if they're doing their job, but he's also got, of course, again, the passive basic attack damage reduction from the front. Again, he's building these stacks a little faster. With Bewitching Dagger on top of that, good luck to anyone trying to kill you with auto attacks as a support Lancelot. All right, He's one of the very, very few Lancelots, Lancelots, supports, I don't know what I was... <laughs> one of the very few Lancelots that doesn't care. I don't know what I'm thinking. He's one of the very few supports that does not care that much about the Hunter's damage output. Alright? If you're a support main and you hate Hunters, give Lancelot a try. Because he's actually a fairly good support. And again, he's got a push here with his second ability. He's got a slow and a root or a root off his horse. It's your, you know, it's dealer's choice. He's got a cripple on his ult. In fact, the only ability he has that doesn't have crowd control is his first ability. But you can use this very easily for positioning. Come here, Neath. I'm going to kill you again just for an example. Look. Oh, I'm supporting my friends. Oh, we're having a problem. Ah, oh, they're on the attack. All right. Boom. Boom. And there she is. She's just been repositioned. Right. And then I get this. And then kaboom. Ah, uh, yes. And then we pick up the other Manticore Spike, and then we're just going to stall out here while we go boom. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, and then we close this distance again, and here we are, right? Lovely time. Absolutely lovely time. The first ability, unlike with Jungle Lancelot, where the first ability is used to hit them twice, with Support Lancelot, the second dash doesn't need to hit them. The second dash is more about positioning you where you need to be to push them or to generate just enough distance between you and a melee enemy to get onto your horse and build up some shields so you can stall even longer. Things like that. So the first ability, while it doesn't actually do that much damage because obviously you're a support Lancelot, nor does it have crowd control, it is in a support Lancelot purely used to reposition yourself to somewhere you need to be. It's very difficult controlling a support Lancelot, because not only does he have protections out the wazoo, and he takes almost no damage from front, frontal basic attacks, but he's dashing through people all over the place, and just locking this guy down without a cripple, without a serious cripple on hand, or Nox for Pete's sakes, is very, very problematic if the Lancelot knows what they're doing in the support role. And again, Bewitch Dagger can really help with this. So you've also got that option... But let's go with let's go with one of my favorites, right? Let's let's run the Pridwin here. Let's go with Glorious this time, just for show. And then at this particular point, let's grab um let's grab Erosion just for kicks, right? So we've got these, and then we upgrade to Lano's Mask, and we get damage mitigation. And this is the reason why I prefer Lano's Mask over, say. Sentinel's Gift, right? This is going to give us damage mitigation, which is going to help us even more against basic attacks. So we have the 18, you know, we have anywhere from 
12% to 18% reduction from basic attacks. If you really need it, you have Bewitched Dagger. We have Lano's Mask on top of that. It's just... It gets very out of control. Okay? It can get very, very ugly. Put these in their proper place. Grab Horrific Emblem, because that's my usual go-to, because it's really gross in the early game. And this is usually how I'll approach building support. Lancelot, obviously, I threw Erosion in there just for kicks. You would build whatever your team needed at the time. Again, that would be anti-healing if your team needed it. If your team needs attack speed reduction, that would be where you would put either Midgardian Mail or Bewitched Dagger if you want that instead. Either one is good. That's where you put that, right? So... Absolutely, a surprisingly good support. I won't say he's like the best support ever, but he is very different. And the really great benefit, I talked earlier about the support part here. I talked a lot about how he's a little bit more impactful in the support role. This is because support Lancelot in the early game really slaps. Okay, obviously he's an assassin. He's got some really good potential damage output here, but skilled strikes there, if you hit the two-hit combo and they're at the proper distance, that is a fairly high amount of early game damage, because that's just flat damage. It doesn't need power to hit for 115-ish damage, right? At level 1. And that's... 115 damage is a lot of HP in the early game, when people are typically running around with obviously less than 1,000, right? So... And again, with his ability to move through the jungle faster than average, he can actually theoretically support, if you know what you're doing, you can very easily support two different lanes at the same time. Whether it's, usually this is going to be duo in mid a lot of the times, but it's going to make it very difficult for the enemy support to keep pace with you, and it's going to make the enemy jungler's life a living hell. In fact, a lot of the times, if the enemy jungler really wants to gank duo lane or mid lane they have to be kind of aware of the fact that they've functionally got a shorter than average time limit because lancelot can rotate faster than most other supports so he is a really terribly interesting support now you might ask yourself well professor what about lancelot as a solo laner can he solo lane the rough answer is sort of that's a bit of a trickier question because how good Lancelot plays in the solo lane depends very aggressively on who his laning opponent is, more than usual. Alright, now, any solo main is going to say, you know, how good any given god is in the solo lane is going to, to some extent, depend on the matchup, obviously. For Lancelot, it's a bit different because if he goes up against somebody who relies on basic attacks, he's going to curb stomp. A mild exaggeration, but he's going to, you know, the only hope that that auto-attacking laning opponent is going to have is killing him in the early game, because if they don't kill him fast enough, since he has all these minion kills all to himself, he is going to stack his quest passive incredibly quickly, and it will be a very short amount of time usually before the Stygian Beacon starts popping up the second time, where he's going to run... He's going to have these 60 stacks, and keep in mind that I'm also factoring in the blue buff, and assuming he does get the cooldown Scorpion in the middle there, although that's just one minion, so that's not terribly important. But this is also factoring in, you know, the blue buff that he would be getting occasionally as well. It's a bonus three minions. But, you know, by, this, th by the second Stygian Beacon... Uh, spawn, he's going to be either done or at least over three quarters of the way to filling his quest passive, and that's going to make him very difficult for an auto-attacking laning opponent to deal with him in the solo lane. If he's facing an ability-based person, this benefit largely goes out the window, and his great benefit here is his ability to rotate to mid for a gank, which, if you're gonna, if you're looking to run that strategy, and this is the reason why I don't really like Lancelot in the solo lane, if you're going to be trying to use Lancelot because he can rotate quickly to mid lane, just use a wheelish. She does hit harder, she's not as durable as Lancelot is, but she hits harder, and on Suku, the little leopard that she rides, the black leopard, she matches that movement speed, alright? So, generally speaking, Lancelot is going to be building sort of 
some combination of the items that I've talked about so far. Uh, if we're going to be talking about this, and it's worth talking about because I know somebody will ask or somebody will want to know. So we'll talk about Solo Lancelot really quick, but again, just use Alelish. You would, of course, generally speaking, for starter items, you are going to be either going into Bluestone Pendant, intending to go into Bluestone Brooch, or Sundering Axe a lot of the time. Where is Axe into Sundering Axe? This is going to be personal preference. I find Bluestone Pendant really nice, personally, so... That's just my personal preference. So let's assume Bluestone here. Assuming a physical landing opponent, you'd run Gladiator's Shield. You would run Soul Eater, which when you build first is up to you. People are... Again, this is a personal preference thing. Some people prefer Soul Eater first, then build Glad Shield second. Some people prefer Glad Shield first. It comes down to your preference, right? And then you would need your dual protection item... This would be best to be either Stone of Binding or Manticore Spikes. If you're behind, I would recommend Manticore Spikes. If you're ahead, I would recommend Stone of Binding. Because if you're behind, you're probably not getting your mana buff that often. So the MP5 for Manticore Spikes is really going to be helpful. Or if you're one of those solo laners who really likes building a Item 2 Mystical Earring and then just sit on that, just using that for the MP5, that's totally fine. Just start your usual way and just roll into Manticore Spikes somewhere in the mid-game very effective. So we're going to assume Manticore Spikes in this example for that reason, but again, keep in mind that Stone of Binding is another strong option here. Then we're, of course, going to, at this point, want our physical, uh, not physical, our magic protections. Uh, again, I'm really fond of Genji's Guard for this, just for a little bit of extra cooldowns. We got our 30% cooldowns there, and then for the final item, it's either going to be more protections. This is going to be usually a dual protection item, uh, you could also, by the way, run Pridwin instead for Genji's card if you really wanted to. You could also run Pridwin instead for Manticore Spikes, but, again, mana problems. But you can, right? And as your final item, this is going to, again, you know, you could run Pridwin as a final item. You could run Mandal of Discord if you decided not to go Genji's guard. Maybe you decided to go Oni Hunter's Garb instead, which is another really strong item. You could still run Pridwin at the end here, right? Again, my main issue with Solo Lane Lancelot uh, is that everything you would want to use him for, a wheelish is generally better. Again, the exception here is if your landing opponent is auto attack based, and in the current meta, with how important the early game is, you're not going to see as many auto attacking gods in the solo lane, because auto attackers really come online in the late game. Most auto attacking gods don't perform supremely well in the early game most of them are really best late game there are a couple of exceptions to this but by and large most auto attacking focused gods really are striving for that late game and that's just not as rewarding as it used to be right now it, mid game is very important so it's unlikely that you're going to see lancelot useful in the solo lane he doesn't have any built-in sustain which puts him a foot down with a lot of his competitors Similar to Odin's problem, but Odin has a shield that he can summon up at any time, and that shield is just, boom, there, and it's huge. Lancelot's shield is flat, does not scale with his power like Odin's shield, and it starts out very, very low, okay? Which is a totally separate problem. So, generally speaking, I'm not the biggest fan of Lancelot in the solo lane for these reasons. In later game metas he can really be good. Because you're more likely to see more auto-attackers in the solo lane. You're more likely to see your team need someone to deal with auto-attackers. Lancelot is really interesting, where as a solo laner, if your support is having a really hard time, they're just getting shredded by the enemy ADC, you can step in and deal with that because Lancelot is really good against ADCs because of his passive. And of course, again, since you'd be in the solo lane building those stacks, you're probably going to have a lot of those stacks by the time you need to jump in and help your support out with these ADCs, or this ADC damage. You can probably tank a lot of that due to that. But in this meta, as it stands, Season 10, I would recommend against Lancelot in the solo lane. You're just not going to come up against a lot of the matchups that are good for him at this point in time, because right now, those matchups, those gods in the solo lane, those more auto-attack gods, just aren't as rewarding right now in the current meta. So... You know, he's really great in the jungle role, he's really great in the support role, 
he's really interesting in the support role. This is where I personally prefer to play him, not just because I tend to play support a lot more, just because I'm technically a support main, but also because he offers some really unique advantages in the support role that are really difficult to match with anyone else. Namely, his unusual resilience to auto-attacks, which is something a lot of supports have a problem with. So, with that being said, that is Lancelot. I will be doing a support and a jungle for him soon. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be working on after this. But this is the Lancelot discussion for his build, for his abilities. Again, keep in mind, regardless of what role you're running Lancelot in, the ability order is second, first, third. All right? After that, after you get the year three abilities in this order, which one you prioritize does change based on your role, and I want to really quickly talk about this. If you're playing Jungle Lancelot, you want to max Skilled Strikes first. This does the most damage, this is going to help you clear really quick because it consistently slaps the jungle camps. This is what you're going to be increasing. It does the most damage to enemy gods. This is your move. If you're support Lancelot, you actually want mount up to be maxed first because it is going to increase the shield you're running with. It is going to increase your durability in the short term. So if you're support Lancelot, you're going to run mount. You're going to run mount up. If you're solo lane Lancelot, again skilled strikes. But again, I don't recommend solo Lancelot in this meta. But, with that being said, thank you all very much for joining me. If you liked this, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, please ignore me. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, or requests, please leave them down in the comment section below. And thank you all very much for joining me, and have a great 24 hours.